What's up, everybody? Big Hurt, fresh out. You're tuned in to another interview with one of the dopest shows on YouTube. I'm here with Cree Cree, Athens Park, and OG. And uh, we know we're gonna get his story, man. Coincidentally, um, he hit me up on social media and come to find out we was at the same spot together, <laughs> USP Long Park. It's a small world. And that's why I say, if you a piece of shit in the pen, motherfucker will find you on the street. <laughs> so watch yourself, man. You, you got to have to carry yourself in the right fashion. Sure. Anyways, Cree Cree, man, tell the people a little bit about where you're from, um, how you grew up, and, um, you know, a little background. Uh, well, I'm 48 years old. Um, I'm from Anthos Park. This is where we at. Born and raised in Los Angeles, California. Uh, partially raised in the Bay Area. Um, pretty much just went to school, uh, dropped out. Start selling crack, gang banging, and um, just doing all the wrong things. Yeah. So what uh, what what got you into gang banging, man? Was it because uh, just ba basically lap, lack of supervision at home, or were you just you know looking up to the big homies on the streets, or how how that how that transition into that? Well, I think it's more because my 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 upbringing in the house was I was in a functional household. My father, okay, you know he had a job, I, and I grew up with my father and my stepmother, but they were. Uh, a good family. It was no uh, physical abuse, no mental abuse, no okay. drugs, no sexual type. You know, it was a good environment. I went to church and everything. It was more or less, I just saw the big homies out here. You know, they was doing their thing. This is the 80s. You know, so, okay. you know, this okay. is 80s. so it's a different time than now. So the homies is here. We're more like a family unit. I used to walk through this park every day, going to and from school. So I just saw them and you know, they was the they was the superstars back then in the 80s. I know I always told people like for me, you know, I didn't have a really a father figure. So like the big homies, like when I seen dudes like fresh out the pen on, you know, with some dubs or 22s, you know, and the other dudes selling dope on colors with D's. It was right. it was like for me, it was like, oh, man, that seemed like that's the lifestyle. Exactly. And that's what kind of drew me into that, because my household other than that was, you know, pretty functional, too, man. Um, did you, uh, did, so what did you get involved in initially? Did you just start gang banging or were you selling drugs or? Um, when I was young, I used to break dance. I used to break dance. We used to do graffiti, used to tag. And like, I was in the 84 Olympics uh, with uh, Lionel Richie, the closing ceremonies. Oh yeah, and yeah. And so right after that, you gotta think that's 84. That's when crack hit LA real, real powerful. And it, it, it after, after I started, stopped break dancing, I wanted to get into that, 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 that fast money. Cause I started seeing all these, you know, Everybody going from being broke to ghetto rich. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I wanted a piece of the pie. That's what this, the, the drugs drew me in. As far as the game banging, this actively game banging, I always knew I was going to be from here because this is where I grew up. So mm -hmm, I pretty mm -hmm. much knew. You know, it, I'm not from the area where they jump you in and, you know, kicking your ass, tell you from there. I, I grew up around here. You know what I'm saying? My stepbrother's from around here, my homeboys, I grew up. So I knew eventually it was gonna, I was going to be an uh, Athens Park boy. You know what I'm saying? And what was, um, so what was the incidents that led up to you eventually uh, doing federal time? Oh, well, I got out of jail, a fire, I was in a fire camp. I got out of juvenile fire camp in 89. Um, I got out, it was pretty much, this 1989 was, it was a lot of gang activity around here and a lot of drug dealing. So you can't, here I, I couldn't really make any money. So I took my, I took my, uh, my drugs elsewhere <laughs> to another state. And um, I pretty much went to uh, with Kansas when I was at another state. And um, I uh, met friends out there and we became cool. And I just was going back and forth, getting addicted to the fast money, going back and forth, back and forth. And it eventually, eventually landed me a, a case, an indictment. You know, I got caught up. And um, what kind of time were you looking at? Uh, well, I got caught with a thousand grams of crack. And see, uh, this 1988 is when they implemented the, uh, the crack law, mm. you know, the mandatory minimum. So what that is, is if you get caught with a certain amount of drugs, you would get a, 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 a guideline from, well, it was the less you get for five and the max was 40, five to 40. And then they had, Damn. if you had, uh, what was that, uh, 50 grams or more, you would get 10 minimum and life maximum. So by me getting caught with a thousand grams, I was in the tender life category Damn. because all it takes is 50 yeah. grams and that triggers uh, a mandatory minimum sentence, mm. tender life. So um, I was uh, with a thousand grams and my uh, guideline and um, my background, I was facing um, 20, 20 years. I, I, I ended up doing um, 
I did. I went to jail in 1990. I got 2008. So I ended up doing 17 years and 10 months in federal prison. Wow. wow. 17 years. That's crazy, man. They put them down crack laws, man. It's like they locked up a lot of good brothers, man. And they had, they did, they did. I think it was intentionally because it was just doing sweeps all across the, you know, the different it's filling states. up the prisons. Right. It was, it was just like it's like 89, 90, 88, 89, 90. They was just sweeping people, sweeping. All you hear about is just sweeps, 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 and everybody was in federal prison. <laughs> <laughs> and what was it like going through the, the whole court process, man? Because a lot of people don't understand what that's like as far as, you know, once you get, you know, arrested and arraigned and all that shit, dealing with you that get, bullshit. You get arrested, you get arraigned, they press you for information, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's just, you're stressed out. Now that you're not out here anymore, you're in there trying to keep up with the people out here and the courts. And you're just facing, uh, depending on the amount of drugs you get caught with, you're, you're facing... That's the time you face according to the amount of drugs you cover. I had, just like I said, I had a thousand grand, so I was I knew I was looking at like no less than fifteen, no more than twenty something in that in that sliding scale. So it's stressful, you know, and, that, and especially not knowing what's going to happen. I I took a plea, you know, what I'm saying so I, I wasn't going to go to trial and all that. I'm on a case by myself, so you know, I pleaded out, took my time, went to federal prison. <laughs> and what was um, the feds like back, you know, back then? Because I know it's changed a lot. Oh. Fuck, it's from the time you went in since even when I went in in 2000. <laughs> okay, I did a platform a while back, and I made a statement. I said that uh, jail was fun, and they took that the wrong way. Mm. You got to understand that I was 19 years old when I caught my federal case, gang banging, and I'm wild. So federal prison was much different back there. You know, mm -hmm. you had co-ed prisons back there. Oh, you shit. Had, you had, yeah, you had like three co-ed prisons. You had a, like a youth federal act. That's where they put me in Inglewood, Colorado. Okay. That's where I started. So when I said it was fun, people, you know, the comment section, oh, yeah, yeah. but it wasn't, I, and, I, and I should have rephrased that, but it wasn't fun meaning like it was. Like you want to go there and party no, and shit. You no, know, but if I had to be there, the golf, mm -hmm. the cable, the vending machine, the money. You mm -hmm. had all that in federal prison. Yeah. You know, they bring people in to dance and entertain for you. So, I mean, it wasn't, you wasn't really thinking about the time after you got it. You just yeah. wanted to get in and fit in until you go to sleep and you start thinking about, I'm going to get out till <laughs> yeah. 15 years later. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah, you know, and the federal system was much different back then. Way. Yeah, because I heard they had golf. Oh, I remember they had uh, concerts and all type of shit. Now. All type of shit. You know, Tupac and... Uh, That's what I heard. They Long Park back in the day. Yeah. Tupac, Tupac came to Long Park, Yo-Yo, all of them. So, you know, the people... Uh, MC Hammer came to Tell Hut. So, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. You could, you, back then, they was allowing it. They was trying to have... You know, make it much easier yeah. back then. It wasn't trying to... Do you think there was more rehabilitation back then? Or were they... Were people that not really care? They just was entertaining? I think they were more entertaining. Because they... I mean, put, put golf. I mean, you go out there... What stopped the golf thing? <coughs> when the riots started happening, people started using those... You know, those nine irons and all that, getting their ass <laughs> whooped. You know, so they, had to, they had to cover up the golf courts. And, you know, a lot, when they started... When they, when they changed that crack law and they brought a lot of young, wild black dudes in there, it just kind of changed everything. Changed the whole demographic, yeah. I mean, huh? You got to really keep it real. Just, you know, it was a whole different, it just turned different, it, you know. You can see the change. And it's definitely, from when I left, it, it was horrible. They took out all the weights. It took a lot of stuff out. Took the I cigarettes the out. Weights, that's yeah. good they took the cigarettes out for health issues. But yeah. that, you know, that's a relief. That's a stress reliever. Yeah. And the weights is a stress reliever. You stress, know, weights are, yeah, one of the biggest things. You know like, yeah, we the got machines. The, the machines, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that was a cool, but they take that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, so. So what, as far as like, since, you know, being young and going into the pen, I mean, were, were you at any time like really thinking about like, okay, this is what I'm going to do when I'm going to get out? Or you just kind of like were just doing your time at the moment? Yeah, I was, uh, you know, uh, when you got that kind of time, I, yeah, I was just doing my time at the moment. It wasn't until my last five years I started thinking about, that's when I started really, you know, at this, this shit's real, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm about to go to the free world. I went in at 19, I'm coming out 38. Shit. So, you know, I'm, I, uh, 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 I'm excuse me, 37. So I'm looking like, what the hell I'm gonna do? Yeah. You know, I mean, the GED and all that's cool, but you know, I don't really have any, I didn't have any, I, before I left there, I didn't have a real job with Taco Bell. I had a little few little jobs. I mean, working around here at the park, but I didn't have a job job, but I didn't know how like to- Like a career oriented right, job. Right, I didn't have a career oriented job. I was just, I was thinking about those kind of things, what, what, what I was facing. But you know what, though, I, 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 when I got out, I said, well, just like how I ran the little drug thing, the little gang thing, I'm going to push up on a job like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I, I mean, I didn't want the, the, uh, the jobs 
and I, they interviewed me, and I just tell them, look, man, I just got out of prison. I'm trying to do the right thing. Can you help me? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I cut all the other the, the bullshit out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because you, you you had, I mean, you had that gap of employment, so it's like, where you been at? Blank. Where you been for yeah. the last 17 years? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, and they helped me. Just, it, sometimes you got to keep real, but fortunately, I got out. I uh, paroled to Oakland. Um, I got a, I landed a security job. Uh, it's excellent security in San Francisco. They, they work with you. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that, from there, I was just... Working, but then I, I got caught up back up in the streets because when I got out, I was, I was seeing that it's still you know it doesn't much change. They still selling crack. <laughs> yeah. They still smoking crack. They still smoking <laughs> weed. So I was like man, I need to just make a few more dollars, extra dollars, and that that got me caught up again. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm I got a violation. Oh shit! And then I went from I parole from um, uh, Victorville Prison, and I do my did my violation and. FCI Herlong. And oh, I, yeah, yeah. That's, that's where I paroled from Herlong. Man, listen. Yeah. I, when I went up there, uh, they, they started making three, three, man, three man bunks. Oh, shit. Oh, man. No. They got three men up in there now? Oh, man. When I, when I, when I seen that. That I means they it. sardining up in there. This motherfucker already small as shit. Man, listen. Three man bunks. I went to Herlong. <laughs> and, I, and that's when I really started like, okay, I got to stop the fuckery. Wow. Man, I gotta stop. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta man up. I gotta grow up, man, because it's 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 it's, gonna be, it's out of control. Three people in a cell. Fuck. It's bad enough you got two people. Yeah. There. The third, third person. person? Like it, somebody's gonna get killed. But yeah. It's, it's gonna be it's gonna be a wow. lot of like I say wig splitting. <laughs> yeah. Damn, man. <laughs> what what was some of the, like I know uh, you know being that you were like in the gang stuff, man, and a lot of people ask me, but I'm like I wasn't in a mix like that. What was some of the politics you had to deal with being that you were from Athens Park and you were active when you went in? Uh. Well, I mean, when I came in, there was a, it was, when I came into this federal system, there wasn't a lot of bloods, you know what I'm saying? There was a handful, there was a lot of crips, but like I tell people, you know, when you hear in our backyard, you know, the blood crips situation is not really, it's, they kind of keep it this, but when you leave California, bloods and crips yeah. to stick together because you got other, California. it's, yeah. got, it's more, more basically about California mm-hmm. because you got New York, DC, it's other people that's B-more. trying, yeah, yeah. B more, there's people that's trying Cali, so Cali had to stick together. But, um, you know, it's just the, the politics is, I mean, you know, it's just when you go in there, it's a, it's a different set of rules. You know, the tables, you got to eat this section, eat with your peoples over here, mm-hmm. you don't mingle over here, over there, uh, you know, just don't walk through the tables, that gets your wig split. Yeah, uh, yeah. just uh, you gotta have your paperwork correct because you know, they give you 30 days to have your, your shit, if you got your shit. Go to the hole until you come back until you have your shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, it's just, it's just, you know, don't fuck with the homosexuals. You know, you, yeah. know, you get caught doing that. It's a weak splitter, you know what I'm saying? But um, it was a bad thing when I started seeing a lot of guys trying to be shot callers. That's what I didn't really like because a lot of older guys are coming in and they feel like they was 40 years old and you the little homie, you 27, I'm calling shots on you, I'm the big homie. You know what I'm saying? But out here <laughs> on the street, it, yeah. yeah, but out here on the street, you was no, a nobody. Yeah, you know yeah exactly, so, exactly. You know, and even though, you know, I was, wow, I never did the shot caller thing because, you know, I'm just, you know, I, that's just not my role, you know, as a yeah. game back, you know, that, that shot caller stuff, but I've seen it happen. I've seen guys uh, bite off more than they can chew, trying to uh, direct 10 to 15 other take people. Take a role that yeah, they take can't a handle. Role that you can't handle. You can't handle it. That, that, that takes brains. And everybody doesn't, you know, everybody just don't have that. You know, it's, I was telling, um, in one of the interviews, I was telling people like at Long Park, man, it wasn't no joke up in there, man. They had, uh, remember the warden had the Cowboys. And uh, remember, yeah. uh, even some of the CEOs, you know, people like, what's up with the CEO? I said, CEO, the Long Park, so I'm going to get down with you. They'll take you. Remember Thomas? He'd oh. take the belt off and, and I was, get I was in a couple of institutions with uh, Thomas in the kitchen, right? <laughs> <laughs> but he, was, he stayed the same <laughs> yeah, yeah. everywhere he went. He, yeah, he, he keep it real. Kept it real. You know, just, Long Park was a prison. I liked it because, like the kitchen, they didn't pay you much. You but hustle. they paid you with food. Yep. Okay, you want you, you want somebody? Go cook the four chicken. They let you cook the chickens, the shrimp, and you know, the sugar, and you can make money. You yeah, know what I'm saying? That's yeah. what I liked about Long Park. That was yeah. so unique. It was business. Uh, it was it was all business, you know what I'm saying? But uh, the ward at that time when they changed the ward, they didn't want him because they used to like more like he was an inmate lover. 
you know what I'm saying? Because you know, he broke up the little cowboy circle. Oh, you know, prior okay, to yeah, him yeah, there, yeah. they, you know, the, 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 the police had a, a tight grip. You know, they were yeah. the, the cowboy crew. They take you back in the hole and they beat the shit out of you. Were you there when that uh, the inmate had the knife, came out the kitchen no. with the knife? No, I didn't. That's right before that. we got. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there. yeah there was an inmate at Long Park, came out the kitchen with knife strapped to his hands, and he just, right. fuck it, he went out. And that's why they, when you walk down the corridor, they tell you, have your hands out your pocket. That's right, that's right. They're scared, yeah. they're scared when you walk yeah. down the quarter with your hands in your pocket. They feel like it's going to happen again, you know, so. <laughs> Did you have any incidents with any SEALs while you were down? Yeah, hell yeah. Well, that's how I went to Marriott. You, it's all like a fight? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was in, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was in USP <laughs> Leavenworth, uh, 95. Uh, and this was the, 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 uh, the crack law. Remember I tell you about the crack law? The, yeah. the, uh, they were supposed to change it. So they give people, you know, like they... They put this thing in here. They're hoping you. Right, but hope you're like, we're going to change the law. We know it's unfair because the ratio is 100 to 1 ratio. Yeah. They had a riot behind the crack law. So they, they, they oh, were like, right. it the didn't change. Rights. So yeah. they, they started, you know, inmates took over the jail. They burnt up jail. It was all the news, CNN, all that. They, they beat up people. The police get into a fight. They're breaking arms, legs. Everybody's going to hold. People going back to court. So they brought the first wave of people. Some people came to uh, uh, Leverworth. Well, I was in Leverworth at the time. So somebody said, yeah, your homeboy back there. And he said, yeah, take off. We, we took off already. Take off. Go ahead, take off. So I'm like, what? <laughs> what? He said, take yeah, off. Don't, don't, don't tear shit up. They ain't changing the law. We're going to be stuck. We're going to be stuck into this time. I'm like, damn. I was only five years into my sentence. You know what oh, saying? shit. So I'm like, damn. So I'm like, OK, I want to take off. You know, it's because you know, you're giving a word. But I'm like, damn. But, so I'm trying to get shit pumped up out here in my like, You know what I'm saying? So I end up you know, doing one-man mission in the kitchen and got boot bopped down that motherfucker. <laughs> I got, I touched everything in that motherfucker. Oh, see, like shit. the wig, wig splitting is so when you, you know, you losing blood and limbs. The boot bop is just the boot bop, the one, two. I got my ass whooped from the kitchen. Oh. All the way. <laughs> <laughs> they stayed there. They throw the oh. roasted pig. Oh, I shit. I stayed in the whole, I stayed in the whole at Long Lenworth. And uh, that's why, well, that's how I went to USP Marion. Okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, but they was, and when I got there, and they, they, like, they, they, when you get there, they waiting on you. Yeah. They already know about you. Oh, you oh, you like to hit police? Oh, we got something for you. Man, but what saved me for getting my wig split and the welcome committee at Marion, it was some bad actors who in the truck with me. They had, they had to beat the police up bad. Some white boys. Oh, shit. Yeah, some white boys beat the police up bad. When they got there, they were so busy whipping their ass, they oh, gave me a pass. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so they, soon you get there, they put hands on you. Oh, when they, soon you get there, they, they got, it's a V. It's a V shape. And it's, a t- it's all intimidation. Yeah. You pull up in the van, and they got the sticks. They got the horse shoe mustache. It was the good old boy network. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Snapping the stick. I said, oh, man, what I done got myself into? I'm going to get fucked up. But the, the, the white boys, the dude came to the bus, uh, uh, Wes Johnson. Dude, good. I thought as soon as it, boom, out the bus. I thought, beat down. Damn. White boys beat up. I was like, damn. If the white boys get beat up like that. My black ass is gonna get cooked. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> I'm mean, like this, <laughs> man. They beat them down so bad. Damn! They was beating them all the way from the from the parking lot uh, entrance all down the. So stairs. they didn't even get booked in yet. They get man. Booked. They get they, fuck booked in. They finna get beat in. You know what I'm saying? They beat <laughs> in, then booked in. You know what I'm saying? And Damn! They got beat up so. By the time they got to me hard thorn, they get your ass out there, they just jerk me out of the thing, <laughs> snatch me from around. Yeah. I wait, oh, oh, they, so they touch me up, scream like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. Making it fun, you know what I'm saying? Because it's all, you know, it's crazy, so, oh. you know, but, but when I got there, they was just, they was just busy spinning their wigs, so, you know, I went to their little system. Oh, I, shit. I stayed there for um, three years. Three years at Marion's, and um, you had to graduate to get out. I graduated. I went to Florence Penitentiary. So okay. It was. It, it, it's. Just, it's. Just, you know. It, it, you just got to be prepared. It's all mental in the feds. You know, yeah. It's physical and mental, but you know, I had that's the incident I had as far as fighting the police got boot bop. But you know, there's been other incidents because you just got to check the police. You just got to tell the police, look, talk to me. Like I talk to you. That's it's, right. It's that's right. Thing, you know what and they, they'll test you. They, they'll see. test you. Yeah, they'll test you. I've been tested. Yeah, every institution I go in there, say something out of it. You know, I, you know, when I was young, I was ah! But as I got older, I'm like, look, you know, it's respect go both ways. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm yeah. I respect you, respect me, and leave it at that. You know, I can't whip your ass and get away with it. But you, you know, because you, they had to use that psychology mm-hmm. and they'll they try to use their power and they trick you to say something. Now they beat you. They do that all the time. You know what I'm saying? I so, tell people all the time, everybody's like, oh, man, you know, if you're a big dude, I said, look, it ain't really about size up in there. Cause I seen the biggest motherfuckers, and they get along the like like long park and do get the paperwork. They check his ass in. Right, right, right. I mean, I seen a mop a dude up from Florida right on the yard. Oh man, you are that long. Like when we was in Long Park, 
Both of us get their wigs split. Man, <laughs> man, they find out dudes be kicking on the yard and dude get the oh, whole boy hot. They said, who? That, you wouldn't even see him from the child hall. He go straight to the hole because he know he's going to get mopped up. Lompoc wasn't playing, Lompoc, man. Out of all the friends I've been to, Lompoc was rocking and rolling. Florence, Colorado. And Victorville. We call it Victor Victorville Victorsville. Yeah. You gotta realize, you gotta realize everybody came from Long Park with the Victor. We opened oh, up. Oh yeah, yeah, the same. Yeah, 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 Ooh, yeah. But yeah. Long, I like the way Long Park, I like the how the police carried it there. They were yeah. more they treated you like a it was like a a, a convict thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like, you know, they it was, was like a camaraderie. Right. You know, was, what's yeah. up, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And they, they they just didn't you know, they they, they wasn't no assholes or no looky loo. They just they, they just back to let you do your thing. Like man, mm-hmm. you doing time, man. You live here. Exactly. I just work here. Exactly. You just do it that way, you know. But Long Park was was a it was it was the good old days. That, they, you, I don't, I can imagine it was like now. It's, it's, oh shit. It's horrible now. I hear stories yeah. now. It's it's bad, man. Yeah. But you know, jail doing time, man. Is 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 mental. You got to mentally prepare yourself, especially doing a stretch like that. You know, and you just gotta you gotta stay away from politics. Stay away from the bullshit. Stay away from the gambling because that poker table. Oh man, that poker, that poker table, table would be bringing dudes down. Well, yeah, I seen a lot of dudes Ooh, go get down. Get dudes go down. That and dope. That Remember in Long Park too, dudes own money for dope. Hey, oh man, now, my, I, don't pay. Motherfuckers want they shit on commissary people, day. People running up bills and then just running in the hole you know, yep. and they catch you at the next institution. Yeah. You know, so it's a lot of shit that it goes with the doing time, man. It, the homosexuals, all that punks and just gambling and drinking and you know, just you got to conduct yourself because it's a world. Being in prison is, a, is, a, is another world, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So you got it's rules and stuff you got to abide by, you know? And it's, it's, it's you know. I'm As you got closer with. to getting out, man, how did you prepare yourself to make the transition back into society? You know, having, you know, at the first phase done, you know, put, kind of set your mind to deal with the time. And now you got closer, you kind of shift that mind frame. How, how did you prepare yourself? I was leery. I, I mean, because a lot of guys that I knew during the time, I would see them like the whole time I was down to 17 and a half years, I seen guys come back two or three times. Wow. And I asked them, well, how, well, how, what is it like out there? Like, you know, yeah. what is it like? What did you do? My mother was like, man, I was out there. To, I had to go up another bank. Or I had to sell some more dope. Or, you know, there was very few that that really made a mistake, mistake, and they regret it. And okay. some didn't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I, I didn't know really what to think. I was like, damn, you know, what's going to be, what is it going to be like in 2008? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's all I kept thinking. You know what I'm saying? So, I, did, I, I, I prepared myself by writing books. I just wrote my first book in, um, in uh, Victor, Victorville. Okay. <clears throat> and so that kind of kept me, just going and do that every day at the law library, kept me out the politics, mm-hmm. it kept me out the way, and I was just, just trying to vision, and just through phone calls, calling them the hood, calling the homies and other people, what is it like out here? But you know, I, was, I, 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 I had to find out myself. So mm-hmm. <clears throat> I, went, I paroled to the Bay Area. You know, because I got st- uh, strong family ties up there, so to give myself a chance, because out here in LA was still kind of wild. So when I got out, I mean, I was just like, okay, just talking to people, like, oh shit, it ain't gonna be hard. It ain't gonna be hard. It ain't, mm-hmm. it ain't gonna be hard. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because I landed my job, a Hispanic girl, she didn't want to do the job. There's a place I tell you about in San Francisco, a security place. She didn't want to do the job. I said, you didn't want to do the job? I said, all they asked you to do was to sit there overnight and watch some pants. <laughs> she didn't want to do it. I said, man, can, please give me the number. Yeah. She gave me the number, and I, I was working ever since. Oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, if you, if you put your mind to it, you can work, man. Like now, I, I, I wouldn't advise anybody to sell drugs, buy banks, carry guns. I mean, it's... It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it, man. Really. I mean, all, all bush aside, it ain't worth it. I got a job now that's so sweet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I drive trucks over the road. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it's sweet. You know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to encourage other people that's getting out of jail, hit me up on uh, my social media, and if you want to drive trucks over the road, I can, I can plug you in. It's much sweeter. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> come out here, and because it ain't, it, this ain't, this ain't, this is my neighborhood, but this ain't the same neighborhood I grew up in. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? It's so much shit done changed. Like we're doing an interview here, it's, it's good, it's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. In the 80s, we had to be, we had to be strapped. We got to be out here. Ready to know who's coming by. Know who's, what's up? Yeah. What's up? We're gonna get, get active. Yeah. But it's, it's the gang violence is down. People now, they're seeing the, that it's better off to work than be in the streets, because the streets, they, they don't, they ain't playing fair. And even like, you know, when you look at it, like, you know, I went in for bank where you look at the end of the day, 
you do a decade for whatever money you got, it don't even pay out. Don't even pay so out. then the, you look like, damn, I could have worked at a regular job and did better than no this. 401K yeah, plan, nothing. No 401k plan, no benefits, no nothing. So, I mean, I work, you know, I work and I, I have a publishing company. So that's that's what's keeping me. But you know, my major source of income is truck driving. So with your publishing company, could we get people asking us all the time, like, oh, man, you know, I'm trying to publish a book. How would you go about doing that, man, the whole publishing thing? Uh, well, I just kind of went through... Um, Asking other people that I knew that wrote books, how they did it, because they was going through Triple Crown and different okay. other, uh, you know, the black um, publishing company. Right? Yeah. So I was like, well, hell, I mean, Amazon had a thing called Create Space where they would, you could just, you know, put your book up, or you upload to their system, and they pay you. You can just, all you got to do is bring the traffic to them, and they'll send the books anywhere in the world, and you get paid. Mm-hmm. I said, well, shit, is Amazon doing that? Creek Creek can do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I start my own <laughs> Cali Creek publications. I mean, yeah. it's, 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 it's not doing as better as Amazon because it's a big machine, mm-hmm. but it, it, it's, everybody wants to support me. But so you get all the money. Yeah, yeah, all the money. You know what I'm saying? So they support me by buying my books off my website. Okay. And so that's, that's cool. But my major source of income is I'm, uh, I'm driving big rigs over the road. Okay. Yeah, okay. But that's sweet. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm, I just came from Florida. Daytona Beach last week after I dropped my load, I, it's party time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I said, man, this be jail. I yeah. wish I, I wish I'd have did it as soon as I got out though. Yeah, yeah. I didn't do I just started driving trucks about a year and a half. So so being being that you've been able to travel now oh. and see different parts of the country, oh. how does that open up your mind? Cause you know a lot of youngsters, they stuck in the hood and they, oh. they, they limited to that just that block radius in the market up the street. There's so much to see out there in that world, man. I, I, just let me just say how pleasurable it was. I went down there, I dropped my load, I finished my work, and I had to do what's called 34 hour reset. I mm-hmm. had to let my clock rest, you know, uh, reset so I could get some more time to drive. Mm-hmm. So while that's going on, I got 34 hours to do what I gotta do. Mm-hmm. I got money, so I'm like, <laughs> I'm in a scooter, I'm in a scooter. Man, in Florida, you ain't got to wear helmets. Yeah. I'm down there, <laughs> police right there. I pull side police, where the police are at? <laughs> Roll this, I don't know nothing about they doing Beach, Florida. Yeah. But I had so much fun talking to people. Yeah. Man, that, that, that beats a jail cell anytime. You know what I'm saying? Man, there's just so much to see. There's so much out there to do, man. You just you got to apply yourself. A lot of guys wait for shit to fall out the sky until they left. That's not going to happen, man. You got to make, you got to create your own path out here, man. And it's, it's the time. You know what I'm saying? This is, man, it's, it's, it's out here. I don't invite, shouldn't nobody go back to jail. If they come out, come out, network, ask mm-hmm. questions. I'm, I'm trying to look out and help dudes. If they want to drive trucks, hit me up on my social media. And, and trust me, you'll be on your way. You know what I'm saying? But man, fuck jail, man. Jail is nothing. I mean, it's all these women out here, all this. Just freedom. Just being, having a, having a, uh, the options of just eating what you want. That's right. That's right. Doing what you want. That's right. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> choices. Down, choices. I was all about, like, E-40 said choices. You know what I'm saying? That it's, it's, it's like that. And what would you tell a, uh, a young Cree Cree? I would tell a young Cree Cree, if he's in the, going the wrong path as far as trying to get that fast money, and it's, but you know, it's the streets dried up out here. So he, you know, get a job, man, get a mm-hmm. job. And, 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 and if you have any, just like prison, you know, a prison has so many creative people with- And then trade, you don't have to go to prison, get a trade, get that shit out man, here. You can, listen, For if you free. want to cut grass, man, get you a lot, get you two lawnmowers, and let motherfuckers know that you cut grass. All, <laughs> it's all type of hustles right yeah, yeah. You know, you paint, whatever, you sing. Yep. Auto body. Come on, man, <clears throat> it's, it's too much. Prison had a lot of creative people in there. You know, yeah, prison, real, real sharp dudes. Man, sharp Super dudes sharp. Make, you'll see the most creative people in prison. Take all that same shit, come out here. If you can run a drug ring, you can run your own company online, or run your own company out here. You know, it's easy, man. Motherfuckers gotta apply this stuff. I, I ain't trying to hear it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If I can do it, That's you right. can do it, you know what I'm saying? For real. So if you, you had any um, any last words to tell the people out there, um, what would you like to share and what would, you know, what could they look forward to you in the future? Um, well, uh, I will put out another book. I've, I have ri- I've written five books, so I, I, I put out Pyro Love 1 and 2. The Almighty Dollar is coming out next. Um, I do background acting right now. I did a, a few scenes of Insecure with HBO. Uh, my home with Bone, he's a director, so I'm up under his tutelage. So. Uh, in the future, you'll probably see me just doing a little bit more acting okay. when it picks up. Okay. okay. But right now, I'm driving trucks. I'm getting that money. <laughs> hey, man, that's a, that's a great hustle. I got uh, I got other partners that are doing this, you know similar things, man. And, and you know, being out here, being free, man, is such a blessing. Oh. And um, I'm blessed to have crossed paths, man, and had the opportunity to do this interview, man. Uh, we, you know, really, really appreciate it. And I think the fans are going to really enjoy it too, man. Man, I'm, I'm glad. I, hey, I, when I first see you, I said, man, no Big Herc. I was a motherfucker, Big Herc. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a, I, I, your show, 
man, it's respectable and it's, it's knowledgeable. And people, I watch it all the time. You know what I'm mm. saying? And a lot of people, I turn other people on to your show. I appreciate you know what I'm it. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a network thing, man. One hand watch the other, both hands watch the face. That's right. It's simple, man. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I appreciate you, man. And it's all love, man. Hey, you know man, saying? I appreciate you. For sure. And there you have it. Cree Cree, Big Hurt, Fresh Out, Life After the Penitentiary. Word. Lockdown's over. Get your yard time in. Exclusively at FreshOutSeries.com.